We really pride ourselves on individualizing fellowship training for each fellow. Uh, we want a fellow to really achieve their goals and that's set by the fellow, not by us, but we provide support from the time a fellow matches with us through the time they choose a mentor, their scholarly work, their career development and eventual transition to faculty. People who choose to come to UCSF to do ID fellowship are amazing in all kinds of different ways. They want to take care of the patient and particularly the vulnerable patients. We are supportive of people going into careers in public health, in research, into industry. We are excited for people to be clinician educators those in antimicrobial stewardship, infection prevention, all of those are to us success. The clinical training in the ID fellowship is varied, fun, and I have I have never been bored. Um, I think it spans the gamut from sort of the um, the sort of normal like things that you need to just have repetitions in. So MSSA bacteremia, I am a pro at this point, to like the truly unusual, rare, and um, fascinating cases. One of the things that makes this fellowship program the most special is the clinical training that we have. I think a combination of the three hospital system, um, the outstanding clinical faculty we have, the incredible, di incredibly diverse patient population across the sites, the clinical training here, in my opinion, is just second to none. It's incredibly rich. I can't say enough how important and amazing it is to have three different hospitals. Each hospital has its own sort of super special set of training opportunities. The Moffitt campus is um, you know, a tertiary quaternary uh, university hospital. We rotate on the general ID service and the transplant ID service. San Francisco General, I call that sort of the real San Francisco. Um, we take care of the most vulnerable populations there. At the VA, we get to work with an amazing group of faculty and care for the veterans um, at that hospital. And so I've definitely seen some of my more like fascinating cases in this first year fellowship at the VA. I felt I've been learning so much, seeing patients, but also learning from our attendings that are experts on every uh, single IV aspect. I think the research opportunities at UCSF are really special. It's the wealth and diversity of research from the strong HIV, TB, malaria research at SF General, the basic science um, pathogenesis and translational research at Parnassus and the physician scientists in HIV at the VA. That breadth and depth I think is really special. I study coccidioides, this infectious fungus, um, and I do bench research. So it was a big transition coming out my clinical year to do full-time or almost full-time lab work. Looking at ways to sort of promote and, and institutionalize patient follow-up to maximize the amount of funding that you're doing from, from your daily care of patients. I work with a, uh, a mentor called Chaz Langlier. So we focus on molecular diagnostics, particularly in lower respiratory tract infections. Um, I'll be doing some uh, focused research on HIV and the uh, Latinx community. At San Francisco General, I think the HIV education is, is really such a, a highlight of, of the fellowship. But I really wanted to delve deeper into HIV research and I thought that this was probably the best place to do that. The research team here that works on those issues um, is one of the top research teams in the world. And Ward 86 we think is the oldest HIV clinic in the country. We, we serve the population that's Medi-Cal, Medicare, and also our municipal universal health care system. It's a wonderful population, it's really interesting, and um, it's very exciting to be involved in research and clinical care. And the other thing we're super excited about is Chan Zuckerberg Biohub, which brings initiatives in um, emerging diseases and pandemic diseases uh, and their uh, expertise in metagenomics to really uh, being at the forefront of emerging epidemics such as we're seeing right now. With COVID, how we all had to change our roles significantly. And I felt like everyone came to participate at the figuring out the best ways to adjust the way that we teach fellows and also how we take care of patients. We have a mentoring program for all the infectious disease fellows to enter during their second year, during their years of research to work on um, opportunities and how to get career development, how to build a team, how to have conflict and conversations, how to interview, how to write papers, how to write grants. And so it's really a career development workshop that we set up. Anytime we run into kind of a technical difficulty or just like, oh, we're getting into new biology that I don't have a background in, there's so many people to talk to. I have had a phenomenal mentor here at San Francisco General and another co-mentor 
at the Department of Public Health. Together, having that diversity of experience is really powerful and has just made my research experience that much more rich. Being able to work in a division that's very supportive of diversity, equity, inclusion is 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 essential. And I and I think uh, the ID Fellowship is doing a fantastic job in not only sort of supporting inclusive environments, but also just constantly pushing and thinking about how can we do better. We all deserve to be treated equally, no matter what color, no matter what gender. And I think that we are progressing to that point where we're, we're normalizing the conversation. Coming from Argentina, I think finding a diverse patient population and a diverse uh, faculty and and fellowship, I think it was very important. And not only to um, share our cultures and, and, and share diverse um, uh, perspectives, but also to provide care to a diverse patient population. All of our, my co-fellows with a range background um, and interest in the program kind of welcome each of us as our own and having our backs. We don't just talk about diversity, equity, inclusion. I think we really put in the effort to make the structural changes, to make this happen, to actually put, put, our, put ideas into action. Living in the Bay Area is great. Uh, there's a lot of access to nature. Um, I love whale watching. I think the quick access to outdoors even skiing in the winter or going to national parks on a weekend on a whim. It's super comfortable all year round. You can go jogging in shorts and in a t-shirt most of the year. So I'm a big fan of the symphony and the opera and um, like to go to those performances when I can. I love running between different sites and like we're on top of Sutro right now and so we're in a forest and it's misty and it's beautiful and you can just that have that be your commute every day. One of my favorite things though is just riding a bike. Riding to Sausalito is probably the best well experience you can have. And then the Bay Area is special and has been special for a long time in terms of its focus, I think, on social justice and um, anyone who's an infectious disease, if they're interested in infections, they're interested in social justice. And I think this is a place where you can really get involved in that sort of work. So there are those things, but I think the reason I came back was just like all of that seems to blend and make this San Francisco magic. The fellows are curious, they're courageous, they're compassionate, they collaborate well together, they work in teams to really achieve these goals of achieving great patient care and also learning clinical ID and doing scholarly work. An environment where fellows come in, each of them has their own unique skills. They're in an environment where they will be nurtured and they will be able to find their passion and their mission and their place as a leader in infectious diseases.